Good morning, Himmels. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful day and happy Mother's Day to all of the ladies here this morning. Today is the deadline for milestone information to Peggy. If you have any information, um, anyone to be recognized on that special day, please see her today. Tomorrow is our Mother's Day dinner for all ladies. 6.30. Tuesday, the Bloodmobile is going to be here. And um, of course, council meets Tuesday evening. That's our regular night for our meeting. Since we're not sure about the availability of the uh, social hall, um, we're, we're going to have the council meeting in the adult Sunday school room. So just keep that in mind as you arrive for the meeting on Tuesday. Uh, just take notice on Thursday, the regular night for choir practice, there is no bell practice. Our final bell practice for the season was this past Thursday, uh, but the choir practice does continue. Next Sunday, we have our special offering for Camp Mount Luther, now the camp for both of our denominations here, since Hartman Center, the UCC camp, has closed. Um, so be as generous as you're able to. Uh, and also take note that we're not collecting for the backpack program this month, that we uh, won't be collecting again until they're ready to restart for the new school year in the fall. And I want to thank you to everyone who donated to the Clean Up Buckets project. That was very successful this year. And for those of you who contribute to the Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes, the collection for this month is practical items. It is listed in the bulletin for those of you uh, watching online. Uh, the things that are needed are toothbrushes, dental floss, deodorant, band-aids, and travel packs of tissues. Any other announcements before we turn to our prayer list additions? Okay, we have quite a few persons to add to the prayer list today. Edna Troutman, dealing with some health problems. And then we have some persons who are dealing with cancer, Lystra Moore, Scott Kiefer, and Austin Kurtz, and hospitalized Ruth Makoviak, and Pastor Gary Nodis, a colleague of mine in the Central Association. And sadly, we're remembering the family of Denny Reynolds, whom we've been praying for for some time. Anyone else to add? Okay, well then I would invite everyone to listen to the prelude as we continue to prepare for worship.
Please stand if you are able. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever.
God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good that we may do your will and work among us all that is well-pleasing in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Let us pray, Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first lesson is written in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. It's found in the New Testament of the Pew Bible on page 172. In Joppa, there was a woman named Tabitha, who was a believer. Her name in Greek is Dorcas, meaning a deer. She spent all her time doing good and helping the poor. At that time, she got sick and died. Her body was washed and laid in a room upstairs. Joppa was not very far from Lydda. And when the believers in Joppa heard that Peter was in Lydda, they said, sent two men to him with the message. Please hurry and come to us. So Peter got ready and went with them. When he arrived, he was taken to the room upstairs, where all the widows crowded around him, crying, and showing him all the shirts and coats that Dorcas had made while she was alive. Peter put them all out of the room and knelt down and prayed. And then he turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Peter reached over and helped her get up. Then he called all the believers, including the widows, and presented her alive to them. The news about this spread all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed on in Joppa for many days with a tanner of leather named Simon. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsively Psalm 23 as printed in the bulletin and on the screen. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths as he has promised. You prepare a banquet for me, there where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim.
The second lesson is written in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. It's found in the New Testament of the Pew Bible on pages 340 and 341. After this I looked, and there was an enormous crowd. No one could count all the people. They were from every race, tribe, nation, and language. And they stood in front of the throne and of the Lamb, dressed in white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They called out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, the elders and the four living creatures. Then they threw themselves face downward in front of the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, praise, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. One of the elders asked me, Who are these people dressed in white robes, and where do they come from? I don't know, sir. You do, I answered. He said to me, These are the people who have come safely through the terrible persecution. They have washed their robes and made them white with the blood of the Lamb. That is why they stand before God's throne and serve Him day and night in the temple. He who sits on the throne will protect them with His presence. Never again will they hunger or thirst. Neither sun nor any scorching heat will burn them, because the Lamb who is in the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Please stand once more, if you are able, for our reading of today's gospel from John chapter 10, beginning with the 22nd verse. The time came to celebrate the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem. It was winter. Jesus was walking in Solomon's porch in the temple. When the Jews gathered around him and said, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? Tell us the plain truth. Are you the Messiah? Jesus answered, I have already told you, but you would not believe me. The works I do by my Father's authority speak on my behalf, but you will not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never die, and no one can snatch them away from me. What my Father has given me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them away from the Father's care. The Father and I are one. This is the gospel of our Lord on this day. Please be seated. And at this time, I would invite the children of the congregation to come forward for the children's time. And our presenter today is Autumn, who has also been the author of this entire series of children's time messages. And she's here today to deliver it in person. guys know what special day today is good job (laughs) did you guys are you doing anything special today Uh, yeah Yeah? that's a good one that's fun okay yeah so today in Sunday school I know you talked about how important moms are and how special they are so did you talk about some things that you can do to be extra nice to your mom today What types of things can you do? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Cleaning big rooms. That's that's tough too, right? They clean all the rooms all the time, don't they? So sometimes some extra help is 
Yes, we do. We have to help our moms. So the Bible says lots of things about moms. In the Bible, they talk about how important moms are. Um, and it says, honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So what they're saying is when you treat your parents with kindness, you'll have a long, happy life with them. And that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. So Jesus also treated everyone with kindness and love. So in that way, our moms are kind of like Jesus, aren't they? Because let's be honest, sometimes we don't listen to our parents, right? You always do? <laughs> good job. <laughs> But so no matter what, whether we listen or we don't, our moms still love us and they're still kind to us and they still take care of us. So we should try to live like our, our moms do and treat everyone with kindness and love, right? So let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for blessing us with our amazing mothers and help us to share your love in the same way that our moms do. Amen. Thank you for your donations for the Heifer Project. We have chosen to send water for life and two flocks of chicks for the people in need. Today is Mother's Day, a day to um, celebrate and remember our mothers, honor them. And on the liturgical calendar, today is also Good Shepherd Sunday. Now, Good Shepherd Sunday is a day that I always anticipate because we get to read the 23rd Psalm, which is one of my favorite psalms and no doubt one of your favorite psalms as well. And in addition to being one of the most comforting passages in scripture, this psalm has inspired some really great stained glass artwork. Now, of course, we do not have stained glass in our windows here in our new church, uh, but a lot of churches do, and a lot of the churches will have a stained glass rendition of Jesus who appears as a European man um, with kind of long locks of, of brownish, light brown hair, and he's holding a shepherd's staff in his hand, and he has a couple kind of really cute sheep around him. And that picture was at the very front of the church uh, in the congregation where I grew up. I saw that every Sunday. 
and I especially liked the sheep. I thought they were really cute. So in church windows, we know the portrayal of Jesus is, well, not exactly authentic. Um, he was Middle Eastern rather than European, so he probably didn't actually look quite like most of the pictures that we see of him. And in the Gospel of Mark, as we know, Jesus is identified as a carpenter before he began his ministry, uh, not a shepherd. We don't really think he worked as a shepherd during his human lifetime. So the man we see in those stained glass windows is the Christ of our faith. And as the Christ of faith, who lives with death behind him, Jesus becomes our shepherd. In our gospel for today, and in other passages of scripture as well, Jesus refers to himself as the shepherd of those who follow him. His adversaries, of course, in our gospel, we know they're not part of his flock. They believe him to be an imposter. They regard him as a heretic who is urging people to depart from the traditional and true faith. Jesus' words simply do not ring true to them. But to his followers, Jesus' words strike a chord deep within. Like the sheep who will recognize the shepherd's voice and come when called, Jesus' followers are drawn to him and willing to travel a long distance to hear him teach and experience his ministry. To his followers, Jesus is a trustworthy leader who has given them a deeper faith. For those who have experienced his healing, Jesus has given them a new lease on life. Now, in our day and age, we have little direct experience of shepherds and shepherding. We may see an occasional sheepdog, but that's somebody's pet. We don't really see dogs herding flocks of sheep in the fields surrounding us. But as with so many things in this day and age, if you've got a computer, you can go online and watch shepherds around the world in action. One YouTube video, which I watched yesterday, shows a flock of several hundred sheep. They're grazing on distant hills, some of them, but when their shepherd steps to the gate and calls them, they all begin to move towards him. Even the ones that look to be far away, they hear that faint voice calling them, and they begin to move towards their shepherd so that within a few minutes, all of the sheep have safely come home. In a different video, several people who are not the sheep's shepherd or caretaker try their luck at calling a smaller flock of sheep who are grazing in a nearby pasture. The sheep ignore them, but when the shepherd, their caretaker, steps forward and calls each and every member of that flock of sheep, a small flock, they all look up and they begin moving towards him. Now, you and I regard ourselves as the followers of Christ in our own day. We are the ones who will recognize Jesus through the eyes of faith, or so we would like to think. We want to be part of his flock, the flock whom he will call home to eternal life. Now, none of us had that opportunity to follow him through the years of his life on earth as a human being. But in our own time, we are faithful churchgoers. We are people of prayer. We are people of charity who try to support all of the good causes in our community, and surely all of these things are pleasing to God. But if we are honest with ourselves, we have to confess there are those times when 
other voices beckon us, not our shepherd's voice, but other voices. There are times when we regard God's word as something for Sunday. And then there's the rest of the week when we're tempted by those other voices. There are even times when we just fall away from worship and the practice of our faith and boy, those other voices get really loud. Maybe we're just very busy. We figure God will understand. Little hiatus from church going, from practicing our faith. We know God will never stop loving us. But the competing voices of those who anchor their own lives in the values of our world can so easily get us off track. And it is so easy to jump from being a little bit off track to being really off track from our faith. Just look around and see what is happening in so many places. Self-promotion has supplanted service as the highest value to live by. Competition has trounced cooperation as the prevailing spirit of our times. And forgiveness? Well, forgiveness just almost seems to have become a relic from the past. While blaming and grudge characterize our current day, if we are honest, we have to admit the possibility is there even for us to get caught up in that angry, blaming spirit of our day. And if we do fall into that rabbit hole of hatred, we know God's love will ever beckon us to climb back out. Our God will never stop loving us and how sad God must be to watch while God's children turn in hatred against one another. How sad God must be when we are the ones to shut out the voice of our Lord and step away from our discipleship. When other voices beckon us, we need to remind ourselves that we are part of God's flock. We know we belong to God's family when we are here and surrounded by other Christians. We need to find ways to keep reminding ourselves during the week when we are not gathered together here and we are more vulnerable to the call of those other voices. As we know, a regular time set aside for prayer is a great way to keep those lines of communication open with God. And there are probably as many additional ways as there are individuals gathered here this morning. Maybe we have a CD of favorite hymns. We could play it a little more often. Or maybe we have a favorite Bible verse memorized long ago, which we like to repeat every so often. Maybe we could start repeating it every day, a couple times a day. Or maybe we have a special place to go where we feel really close to God. Maybe we should go there more often. Whatever works for us, we remind ourselves that we are the sheep always listening for the voice of our shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Savior. There are so many pathways open before us, but we choose to follow Christ. May it be so on this day and as we move forward into our week. Amen.
Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us, show us your wounded and risen body, that we may believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess the faith that does allow us to hear the voice of our shepherd, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. Hear our prayer, O God. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. Hear our prayer, O God. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate on this day and comfort those who mourn, missing mothers who now rest in your eternal care. Accompany those young women yearning to be mothers. Help all of us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from mothers and all who serve in mothering roles in our lives. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear our prayer, O oh God. And we know there are persons who have a special need, so many persons in need of your healing hand to rest upon them on this day. Especially we pray that you might be with Edna, with Lystra, with Scott, with Austin, with Ruth, with Pastor Gary, and we pray for your comfort for those who mourn recent losses of loved ones who have gone home to you, and we especially pray that you might be with the family of Denny, and we know there are others in need, and we lift them and their needs before you now, saying their names on our lips and in our hearts. We pray that you might receive all of our prayers, O God, those we have spoken and those that we have not spoken but cry out from the very depths of our inmost beings. We pray that you will hear our prayers and respond to them and renew us through your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now together we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. <laughs>